MSA, I'll work hard. We got a 32 bit and a 64 bit MSA. All right, so starting from the data directory up in the optional headers, there's going to be this delay import entry, right? It's got a non zero RBA and it's got a non zero size. So it's saying there's going to be some data structure that this is pointing to at RBA 85 CCC. And that's where I can find the delayed entry, you know, one per DLL sort of uh, data structures for delayed imports. So now I'm just going to kind of look around and try to find it. There we go. No, that's not it. Looking for the delay load descriptors, right? So we always say these things point at the descriptor table. It's one per DLL. In this case, actually here on the 64 bit, it only imports from one back on, on Windows XP, it imported from multiple. So back on XP, it imported from uxtheme.dll. Here it's only importing from gdiplus.dll. But this delay load descriptors is going to be a one per DLL array of things where we've got a name. We've got bound IAT, wait, no, wait here. bound IAT and bound INT. So again, this is interpretation. You kind of have to look at the structure in the notes. It said this was P underscore IAT or whatever it was. So this is going to be an RVA where I can find my import address table. And this is going to be an RVA where I can find my import name table. So I'm going to go to 8A000. That's going to be this. So we go to RBA view. So 8A000. And then this is just like, um, well, it's not just like. This is the import address table where we said in delay loads, it's not pointing at that same data structure with hints and names, although they pretend like it is over here, unfortunately. In delay load thing, these are all addresses within myself of my stub code thing. These are all those things that move a constant into EAX. So if I were to, you know, go figure out what file offsets and then disassemble those file offsets, I'd see code which moves values of themselves into EAX. So these are a bunch of addresses within my code of stub code. So when I first load up the binary, they're all going to have those exact literal addresses. As I call those functions, they're going to fill themselves in with the real address of you know, GDI clone brush and stuff like that. And that's what I'll show you in the debugger here in a second. And just to confirm on the import names table that it kind of looks like a real a regular import names table, on the DLL, the lay load import names table. Okay, so it looks like they don't fill in the hints here, but the delay load import names table, 85F00, it has a hint of zero and the name of GDI free. So it's not even bothering to try to help fill in the hints. But so if I go to 85F00, which will be somewhere in here probably, 85F00, we see 00, that's the hint, just happens to not be giving any hint. And then I see GDIP free, right, immediately after it. So this looks like just a normal import names table. Pointers at hint names. And here, this is filled in with absolute virtual addresses of the actual stub code within itself, basically. So and let me make sure those are absolute virtual addresses. So if I want to kind of notionally figure out whether I think these are really absolute virtual addresses or whether these are relative virtual addresses, I can kind of go look at the base address and say, does it look like they're somewhere within base address, image base? Plus, you know, are they less than image base plus size of image, right? That's the total memory range. If they're somewhere in there, their absolute virtual address is somewhere in there. Because right? relative virtual address should step outside. So go to the optional header, image base, image base, one zero 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 zero, size of image, six one seven. So the question is, are they less than one six one seven zero zero? Yes, that's less than 1617000. Right? So it's an absolute virtual just pointing somewhere within the range of itself. It's pointing at stub code. All right, I'll show you these things getting loaded dynamically in the debugger, and then we will get on with the game. <clears throat> Question. Yes. So in this tool, you can't actually drill down to see where that, that stub code is. Uh, did you say I can or can't? 
Well, I don't know, can you? I, I can see the raw bytes and I can try to disassemble them oh, in my okay. mind. Yeah. <laughs> you can try with uh, CFF Explorer, actually, that would be kind of good. So, what was I just looking at? MS Paint for Sys Native, uh, or probably Sys Wild. All right. Windows, Sys Wild, MS Paint. All right, so I'm going to kind of try to cheat, and I'm just going to look between them. So I want to drill down in like 1017. I know this is an absolute virtual address. I know that the, the base address is 1000, so I know that this is an R. If I subtract out the base address from this absolute address, I get an RBA of 17EA9. Uh, 17EA9. I'm going to try to turn that into a file offset. 17EA9. How many zeros are there? Calculators out. One seven E A nine is what I'm looking for. That's the RBA. I'm going to turn that RBA into a file offset. I'm going to try to cheat and find like that RBA in the RBA columns and just click it over. So. I'm literally just going to point up there. I'm going to go 17EA9. Disassembler. Disassembler. Now, the problem is I can never remember the correct way to do this, but I'm going to try. Let's see. Offset. I don't know. I'll try. 178. See, that's not right because I can see over here that the first byte should be 56. Wait. No. This would be 0, 1, 2, FF751C. Yeah, this is the correct stuff. It's just more complicated in 64 bit, basically. Or no, this is 32 bit. It's just, they probably made it more complicated going forward. So, yeah. That basically is not at all as easy to interpret as the XP version that I had on the slide, so I'm not even going to push you to interpret that. Because again, you don't see people know that's easy at this point. But I'm pretty sure if I like dug down into this, I would see that this is that stub code which goes and actually can I prove that? No, can't prove that yet. Now I want to dig into it though. I will stop myself and we will debug it and I'll show you. I will do that while you work on the games. Alright. So I want to show basically um, the lay load imports getting resolved in real time as some action is happening, right? So I'm going to run MS Paint. I think I have to run this administrator. Anyways, open executables, colon Windows, swap, MS Paint. All right, so what we're going to do, right? is we're going to find the delay load import address table. We're going to find that RVA in the file, you know, based on the file information. We're going to look it up in memory, and we're going to sort of watch it change. So based on this file, MS Paint, it says the delay load import is at RVA 8A000. So I'm just going to take the base plus 8A000. So base. I don't think that's the same version.
trying to confirm I'm looking at the same thing. Checking the time date stamp. 4A, 5B, C. Five BC six eight three six eight three and looking at the same thing. It's possible that this is doing some superfluous uh, interpretation, but I'm going to. So MS Paint is running right now. I'm going to break into it, see if any of these changed. OK, they did change. So I do believe these are like, you know, these are the absolute virtual addresses that got filled in at runtime. So I'm not sure why, quite why I'm seeing, not seeing the same thing. But I mean, you can kind of tell these ranges 4Fs, 4Ds, 4Ds, 5.3s. These are kind of like things that are pointing within its own memory, right? So these are the unfilled in entries. When you get you know, the larger values, those are the filled in entries. So what I'm going to claim here, and this is why I should have just done this uh, earlier today. But, uh, what I'm going to claim here is that probably somewhere in about this range, I think, I'm going to flip over to MS Paint. I'm going to move the mouse around. It's going to cause it to invoke some functions. And then some more of these entries are basically going to get filled in. So I'm going to let the thing run again. I'm going to try to keep a keen eye on like what changes in here. So I'm going to go into MS Paint, move around, close it, and now we got to kind of like watch in this range. Keep your eye open. Okay, nothing in that range changed. Did something in any other range change? Did anyone see stuff change? Some things changed. Say what? It seemed like some things changed. Yeah, I thought I kind of saw some stuff yeah, going down yeah. here and change. You right? see a lot more of those big errors now. Right. So anyway, the point was to show that like, you know, some particular big addresses like came in, but I'll refine this while you guys are working on the thing. I'll show you like clearly that one change right there. And I'll figure out why I'm not seeing the same values here for the unfilled in entries as I expect to see. So anyways, the point is you could clearly see at least at the very beginning, like when I started, some of these things got filled in on demand, some of them didn't. All right. So let me make sure I don't have any other stuff remaining here. I mean, I guess I do have that in slide form, but you know, in slide form, the only point is that you know, typically you see low values that are pointing within itself, and then when they get filled in, you see the absolute virtual addresses, right? So unresolved, resolved. This is Memes Paint in Syswell 32, so I gotta figure out what it is. So that's C eight A zero zero, same RDA. I gotta figure out what's going on here. 